Hey friends, welcome to the Taking Your Next Step podcast from Collegians for Christ. Through each episode, we will journey together focusing on becoming better followers of Jesus. If you're eager, like I am, to follow Jesus Christ, then take your next step now by joining us in today's episode. Well, this is the week of our spring retreat in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Uh, there's still time. We, we pushed the registration deadline back just a couple days, so you still have time to register if you're interested in attending the retreat with us. Uh, April 22nd through the 23rd is going to be a great, great time together. We're excited about this, and if you have any questions, please reach out to us. So we have been looking at this idea of appealing to unbelievers, and on our episode on Thursday, as we concluded the week, we really were just setting a foundation of uh, Paul's situation there and how he uh, began to get to know his audience and how we said how vital it is that you and I know as we begin to talk to people, we know where they're at. And so in order to do that, we have to do one thing. We have to ask questions. We have to do something else. We have to show a genuine interest. And so as people, we begin to find out our coworkers, our classmates, maybe family we already know a little bit more, maybe people we encounter in the community, maybe somebody comes and visits church or some outreach event. We need to begin asking them questions to try to find out where they are spiritually. Some people are going to be atheists, some are going to be agnostic, some are going to be some type of Christian background, some are just going to be ignorant, some are going to be very, very skeptical. And so Paul began here in his response to this smorgasbord of people, remember it's Jews, it's devout persons, it's anybody in the market that will meet with him, and then it's these atheists and agnostics, these philosophers, so he literally has this uh, just very diverse audience, and he begins with creation. And he goes all the way back to the beginning. Now, that's going to be very important for some people that we go back that far. I can remember uh, as we moved and began doing college ministry and uh, began to share the gospel, share the gospel. We go around to apartment doors and talk to students. And many times it was effective. And then many times I get these blank stares and I was like, what is going on here? Why are they not responding? Well, what it is, they had no belief that God exists or they didn't know if God exists because they had been taught kindergarten all the way through that you're here through evolutionary processes. There is no God that created you. And as a result, you're not accountable to some God. So they don't see their need for Jesus. You can share the good news of Jesus Christ with them, but if they don't see that God created them, as a result, you're accountable to God. God has a law. You've broken that law. You've lied one time in your life. You've desired something that someone else had. The Bible says, thou shalt not covet. So you've broken God's law. If you stood before him on judgment day, how would you stand innocent or guilty? I would be guilty. Now they see their need for Jesus Christ, why he came. And so many times with our audience, we may get frustrated because we're sharing who Jesus is We're sharing the gospel, but they're not responding. Maybe we need to back up. And that's what Paul did here. He he backed up to creation. And we shared in Thursday's episode how important it is that we know where our audience is. And we do that by asking questions. And don't be afraid. If somebody's an atheist, they're an atheist for a reason. Ask them, "What, what made you become an atheist? And they'll begin to talk to you. You said you're agnostic. What exactly do you mean by that? Like, do, do you believe God? Just start asking questions. If they're part of another religion. Just ask questions and listen. That allows you to find out where your audience is. So let's go into Paul using creation first here. So he appeals to Christian. Why would he do that? Well, one, it was because he knew where his audience was. Now, there's some people there that didn't need to go back that far. That's okay. They would just agree with what Paul said. But creation is the greatest revelation of God to mankind. Think about that just for a moment. Creation is the greatest revelation of God to mankind. Now, I understand the Scriptures, the Word of God, is God's special revelation and is a tremendous revelation of God to mankind, but we don't have Scripture in every single written language at the moment. But creation, as Romans 1.20 tells us, for the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So the invisible things of him, who's him? God. For the invisible things of God, 
from what? From the creation of the world are clearly seen. By creation, we can clearly see God. Who? Every single person that's born on this earth. Think about this. Creation speaks every single spoken language or written language on the world, on earth. Think about the power of that. And so Paul begins right here because creation is such a great revelation. The Bible says they are without excuse. And so Paul just declares this truth that God is the creator, that God created all things. Now, this would have been contrary to their thinking. This may be contrary to people that you're talking to, their thinking, but that's okay. We're going to declare the truth just as Paul declared the truth. He said, God that made the world and all things therein in Acts 17, 24. Seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. And so Paul just declares this truth, which was contrary to what many of them believed, but it would make them think. And so he would go on also and uh, declare that God is not only the creator, but he's the sustainer of life. Meaning you that are listening to me, you without God, you would not be here. Without God, you could not breathe. Without God, you would have no life. You see, we can try our hardest to get away from creation, but it's impossible. You say, what do you mean? You say, I could say, okay, put me in a room, a four by four room. You put up the brick blocks, build it up, no window, no door. You're going to keep me inside. You're going to put a roof on top of it, completely dark, black. I'm going to get away from this greatest revelation of God to mankind, as you say, this creation. But as I'm in that room, And the silence falls in that darkness. I hear myself breathe. I hear my heart beating. Boom. Ba-boom. Ba-boom. You say, I cannot get away from creation. I cannot get away from the testimony that God exists. And so creation is a powerful, powerful testimony to the fact or the truth that God exists. And so much so, the Bible tells us that they are without excuse. And so as we think about a couple things, just two quick questions here as we, uh, as I talk to so many young people and talk to people in general uh, that maybe would not believe that God exists or God is the creator or so forth, there's two questions I always try to get them to think about. Is one is this uh, because they'll refer to science now. Let me just let me preface it with this science now agrees unanimously that the universe came into existence at a single point in time, they no longer believe it's eternal. Okay, and they also understand through natural laws the law of causality, meaning every effect has a cause, meaning everything we see, there has to be a cause of it. You and I see that all the time. Our car starts, why? Because we put the key in. Our gardens are going to grow. Why? Because we put the seed in the ground. A house is built. Why? Because someone imagined it in their mind. They did the blueprints and someone built it. Everything has a cause. You were born because two people came together. Everything has a cause. So when people maybe are not agreeing or believing that God exists, they're going to say, okay, the universe came into existence at a single point in time. What was the cause? Well, well, the Big Bang. What was the cause of the Big Bang? Well, molecules. Well, what was the cause of the molecules? Well, maybe atoms or something, particles. Well, what was the cause? And what I'm trying to help you to see is bring them back to what was the cause of all that? Because there has to be a cause. You cannot logically say that nothing caused everything. But unfortunately, so many unbelievers who are buying into the lie of science because it's not scientific and logical to say that nothing created everything, we need to help them to see that what they're basing their life, their belief on, is illogical. They're just taking the authority of someone else and basing their faith on that. So help them to ask that question, always bringing it back. I'm just trying to, trying to help us here to, to bring it back to saying, hey, where did this start? What began this? What created this? You cannot say nothing created everything. It's illogical. It's impossible. So what would be the best explanation? We see Scripture says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The Bible says that God was 
the beginning. He's what created or put everything into effect. Well, then many people will say, well, who created God? And that's an excellent question. If we're saying everything has a, every effect has a cause, then who on earth created God? Is there another God? But we also must understand this. You cannot have an infinite number of causes. What do you mean? You see, we can't, for every call, for every effect, there's a call. So we can't have an infinite number going all the way back because we would never be here today. They would have to keep going back, 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 back for infinity. We would never be here today. So there has to be something or someone that is uncaused. That has to be the starting point. You said they can't have a cause or it would keep going back. If they have a cause, then that has a cause. Then that has a cause. They're an effect of a cause. I hope you can see that in your mind. So there has to be a beginning point of something that is uncaused. What does the Bible tell us about God? God is eternal. That means what? He never came into existence. He has always been. God is infinite. These truths about God that are revealed in Scripture tell us that He, as revealed to us, was uncaused. So there is your best explanation for all that exists. God is the uncaused cause of everything else. And so I know that's uh, trying to help us through that. But if, when I talk to students so many times and, and people, I can try to bring them back to seeing, okay, you're believing in this and you're saying this, but what cause? Where's the, what cause produced this effect? And so many times I see their head turn sideways, them look, because remember what we talked about last week, Satan has done what? He's blinded their minds. And the vast majority of the time people reject their faith is because of some sort of intellectual skepticism. They think they've gotten wiser than God. And so you and I need to tear that down. And it's interesting that Paul begins here at creation. And many times that's where we need to begin. So on Thursday's episode, we'll move forward and see how to appeal to their conscience. So join with us on that episode. Thank you for taking the time to listen. If this podcast has been helpful to you, we would love for you to share it with a friend or subscribe so that you can stay up to date on the latest studies. You can connect with Collegians for Christ online for more information and resources at cfccampusministry.com.